today I want to speak to you about the statues of the garden in the Garden of Eden. Anyone here got any clue what I'm going to be talking about? Anyone curious? Okay. So, I'm going to start with um, Exodus 32 verses 1 to 5. When Moses didn't come back down the mountain right away, the people went to Aaron. Look, they said, make us a, a God to lead us for this, this fellow Moses who brought us here um, from Egypt disappeared. So, um, sorry, it's a little bit small there. Um, brought, um, something must have happened to him. Give me your gold earrings, Aaron replied. So they all did. Men and women, boys and girls, Aaron melted the gold and molded the, and tooled it into the form of a calf. The, the people exclaimed, Oh, Israel, this is the God that brought you out of Egypt. Then Aaron saw how happy the people were about it. He built an altar before the, before the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a feast to Jehovah. Now, I had always thought that they were serving some sort of foreign god here. But if you read it very carefully, they make this golden calf, and then uh, you think, well, what God do they think it is? And then he says, tomorrow we're going to have a feast. For who? For? So they called the golden calf Jehovah. I'd never seen that until last, like the night before last. The golden calf in their minds was Jehovah. Can you believe it? Now, why? They go on, and if there, if there are any children watching or yeah, just shut their ears, they go on and have an orgy. An orgy, and you thought the Bible was tame. They go they, they like have an orgy in front of this golden calf called Jehovah. Now, why would, why would they behave in this way? Why would they, why would they do this? It makes no sense. It makes no sense to me. And so um, I started to think about it a bit more. And the truth is, is that a lot of us, that people battle to serve an unseen God. They battle. And that's why people worship idols, because they say, okay, that's what he looks like. You know? <laughs> For some reason they thought Jehovah was a golden calf. I don't know why. But they can say, ah, and they can focus their attention. And that's one of the, the, I think, one of the things that people... That, that, that people battle with in praise and worship. They sing, but they like. And so I always try and ask the Lord to give me a picture of, of who I'm worshiping in my heart so that I can focus my worship on that. But so there seems to be some sort of instinct to, to want to focus attention on when you're worshiping. But what does God think of this? So almost immediately God says in Exodus um, 20 verse 4, You shall not make yourself any idols, no images of animals, birds, or fish. You must never bow or worship it in any way, for I, the Lord your God, am a, a very possessive. I will not share your affection with, with any other God. So, God is totally anti-idols or representations or images of us making images of him or anybody else. It's, it's a no-no. God isn't, I'm not saying you can't have art and all of that, but if you are building, making something to worship, God is totally, utterly opposed to that. He does not want anyone to make an image of him. So where does this leave us? Why is God so anti this? Because there seems to be an instinct. And the thing that we, 
I'm going to try and explain this to you because do you understand the conundrum? God, we seem to want some sort of representation, yet God is like, no. Why is that? Does it make sense to you? So let's, let's, let's I'm going to explain Eden to you. And I'm going to explain, I'm going to explain what God's purpose was. And that'll help you understand. And I think think it's going to be really powerful for you once you understand what I'm talking about. So Eden was the meeting of heaven and earth. So heaven, in other words, God and man met. So what, what does that mean? God walked in Eden and man walked in Eden and they fellowshiped together. There was a constant connection there. So much so that, that I'm going to show you that, um, and secondly, Eden was a mountain. So in Ezekiel 28, there's a scripture about Satan, but it says and I want you to, I'm going to read you just the underlined bits. The rest are uninteresting for my point. It says, you were in Eden, the garden of God. So Eden, the garden of God. You had access to the holy mountain of God. Eden was a mountain. Which is why early people built pyramids. It was a way of trying to, and all kinds of other structures. Even the, the temple that Solomon built was this high structure because it represented the meeting between heaven and earth. To, 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 because Eden was a mountain, there was a, 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 a concept that if it's high, there's a connection between heaven and earth. And we see that right through the Old Testament. What do the people do again and again? They go and make altars on the high places. Why? Because the, the ancient Jewish people, Israelites, understood that heaven, that Eden was a mountain. It was a connection between heaven and earth. In fact, it was, it was such a temple that the temple was later built on the same structure as Eden. So you see the diagram there. We have the dry land. Then we have the land of Eden. Then we have the garden of Eden, because Eden was a land, and then God planted a garden in that land. And then we have, what? The tree of life, which represents the... So let's, let's go to the other side. There's the land of Israel, there's the courtyard, there's the holy place, and then the holy of holies where the tree of life was. In, in, do you understand? So it's in completely the same structure. And, and if you go and look at what the temple and the, the tabernacle, it's, they were full of motifs of trees and gardens. Why? Because the temple was seen as, a, and the tabernacle was seen as a recrea- recreation of Eden, of the Garden of Eden. Why? Because it was a place where heaven and earth met. Heaven and earth meets where in Eden. Heaven and earth meets where in the tabernacle of Moses. Heaven and earth meets where? In the tabernacle of David. Heaven and earth meets in Solomon's temple. Eden was a temple. It was was represented as a temple. It was a place where heaven and earth met. Now let's go and look at what they used to put in the temple. So I'm going to show you something because I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something so that I can see. So this is going to look at this, and then we're going to see, understand something we've all read so many times better. So let's read. 2 2 Kings 11, verse 16. Everyone went over to the temple of Baal. So there's a temple of Baal, 
and tore down, breaking the altars. So don't worry about the altars. Here's the important word, and images. So we have a temple. What is inside of the temple? Come talk to me. There are, and there are images. There are images in the temple of Baal. What were those I- I- images? They were idols. They were statues. They were representations of the Baal, that, that God that they were serving. So, let's go to Genesis 1 verse 27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image, same word, of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So what is the point of an idol or an image? It's a representation of who you're worshipping. Now, God is very clear. You should worship no representation, no image of him. So I'm not arguing that you need to, or telling you that you need to worship any image of him. But we need to understand why God made us. He made us as a representation of him. A representation of him. An image of him. So that when people thought, what does God look like? They could just look around. So look at the person next to you. You, you've, you've got a representation of what God looks like. Look at the person behind you, in front of you. Say, well, they don't look exactly. They look like God. You look like God. He made you as an image or representation. But what about my thighs? Doesn't matter. You were made for glory. But what about my hair? You were made to represent glory. What about my nose? You were rep- made to represent glory. What about my feet? <laughs> you were made to represent glory. What else do you guys complain about? Yes. <laughs> that was a low blow. <laughs> Touch my ears and you instantly you guys shout ears. There's nothing wrong with my ears. They were made to represent glory. They were made to represent glory. So God built this temple in the land of Eden called the Garden of Eden, and he put what there? He put Images of himself in that temple. And we, re- we understand this concept. And I'll show you how. For 150 years, we were ruled by the kings of and queens of England. And so, what did they do? They made images of themselves so that people in this land could see what their rulers looked like. Literally, God made you as an image of himself in Eden, in the Garden of Eden. Why? so that the world could see what he looked like. If they saw Adam, they saw God. If they saw Eve, 
They saw God. Male and female, he made them. If you looked at them, you would see God. That was the point. That was why he made them. They were representations of himself. So, how did that turn out? Adam's function was to represent who God is, what he's like to the earth. But we know that Adam decided not to represent who God was. Why? Because he was supposed to be a representation of God. But he and Eve decided, no, we are not going to be dependent on God. We are not going to get our right and our wrong from him. We are going our own way. We are no longer going to be representations of him we are going to be representations of ourselves. We broke that connection with God. We were no longer the statues of Eden. We were no longer the representations of God. We were no longer, if you looked at Adam and Eve, you could know, although there was a faint resemblance, it was no longer a representation of God. Couldn't see him anymore. The world, could, if they looked at, the, at mankind, they couldn't see God properly any longer. But God had a plan to solve this. Because he, he wanted the world to see what he looked like. He wanted the world to see who he was. And so he found another, he, he, he had another man. And we look in in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21 to 22, where it says, So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, who was that man? I know you've got masks on, but speak to me. Adam, Adam thank you, Rechat. Like that. Now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Who is that man? Jesus. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Now, why is the promise of eternal life so important in our walk with the Lord? God is eternal. So if you become a representation of God... Anyone who becomes a representation of God needs to be eternal. Because that's what God is like. So if we look at God, if we look at Jesus, he is on the throne, sitting at the right hand of the Father, he is eternal. So if we see his eternal life, so we see him. So we see God. But this is, I think... I think this will be the clincher. And this is in John 14, verse 7 to 9. If you have known who I am, this is Jesus speaking, then you have known who my Father is. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Sir, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Philip was a bit slow in this passage. He says something <laughs> later. <laughs> one of my favorite passages in the Bible, Jesus goes on to say, I'm going to a place and you know where the place is. Philip says, but I don't know where the place is. <laughs> And maybe I'd have been as stupid as Philip, but if you read it, it's actually funny. You, Jesus says, you know where the place is. Jesus, we don't know where you're going. Anyway, so Jesus replied, don't you even yet know who I am, Philip, even after all this time I've been with you? Here's the thing. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. 
So why are you asking to see him? Jesus came as an image, a representation of the Father. If you'd seen him, you'd seen the Father. If you'd seen Adam, you'd seen God. So the first Adam who, had be, who was created to represent, represent who God was, was an utter failure. And so he, God had to send a second man. Someone who what? Who represent the, the Father. Was an image of the Father. If you'd seen Jesus, you saw the Father. Jesus, where Adam had failed, Jesus was successful. Even for Philip. We've seen him, we've seen the Father. So let's have a quick look at what, so then where does that, where do we fit in now? If Jesus is the image of God. So, so Jesus says, this is what Jesus says. This is in um, John 14, verse 12 to 13. In solemn truth I tell you, anyone believing in me shall do the same miracles I have done, and even, gra even greater ones because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask him for anything using my name, and I will do it for this will bring praise to the Father because of what I, the Son, will do for you. Yes, ask anything using my name, and I will do it. Why did Jesus give us this promise? Because he wanted the world to see the Father. So how did Jesus behave? Because he says, you will do these things and more. We're so hung up on looks and, and color of hair and am I going gray or blue or... <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, but it's the, it's a representation, it's really what people do that gives you a true indication of who they are. So when Jesus did the following things, we saw, and I'm going to go through a list with you quickly, what did they see? They the people there saw the Father because of what Jesus did. So, and if, if, if we do the same and more, we are representing the Father to the world. We're recovering some of what Adam had thrown away. Literally, if people see us doing what Jesus did and more, they will see who? <coughs> Pardon? I hear like, 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 pardon me, I just need to cough. <coughs> they see the <coughs> Father. So let's look at what Jesus did. Matthew 4, 24. News about as far as Syria, and the people soon began bringing to him all who were sick. Whatever their sickness or disease, if they were demon-possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. Seeing Jesus, if someone can just bring my bottle of water over there. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah. <coughs> If Jesus, who was the Father? The Father cared about if you were sick. The Father cared about whether you were demon-possessed. The Father cared about whether you were lip, uh, epileptic or paralyzed. Thank you. And Jesus healed them. So the image of God that people saw was that God cared about their needs. We're supposed to do this and greater. 
That's how we represent God. When people look at us, they see us praying for the sick, casting out demons. They see an image, not the Father. They see an image of the Father, a statue, a representation of the Father that cares deeply about their needs. Another one. Um, Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he, was, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. They saw a representation of who? <coughs> Pardon me. They saw a representation of God who cared about those without sheep, that without shepherds. I am the good shepherd who's, (coughs) pardon me, if Jesus is the good shepherd, if Jesus is the good shepherd, then the Father is a shepherd. How do we represent the Father? We gather the scattered sheep together. Lots of scattered sheep now since COVID. How do, we, how do we represent the Father to the world? Fulfill our, our, our function that, that God gave us. We gather the scattered sheep. Another one. Um, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friend if you do what I command. How do, you rep- how do we represent, how, how are we an image of God? We show love for one another. We lay down our life for our friends. We go the extra mile. We care for each other. I was, I was standing in the foyer. I'd uh, um, been um, basically better now, but I'd been sick all week. Now, standing in the foyer, don't know why it's suddenly, don't worry, I'm fine. Um, (laughs) I was standing in the foyer, and I was watching everyone running around. I was watching Jerome setting up cameras to get a better shot and a better angle and a better in the foyer so that people can get a sense of coming back to church. I was... I was watching everyone set up here. Now I'm supposed to be in charge. The only thing I, I said to Jer- Jerome said, shall I do this? And I said, yes. Literally, this church has a life of its own. People are going off doing all kinds of amazing things. Why? Because they care about you. They, we're seeing people invest their lives, their money, their time into the church because they are a representation of the Father. They care about you. It's why the ashes pitched up early. It's why we set balloons up and we handed out sweets to people. I don't know if you got a sweet. Yes, I see someone got a sweet there. And we, we broadcast live around. Why? Because we love people. We are a representation of the Father. We are an image of the Father. When we love people... We look like God. Are we God? No. Dear Lord, no. But we look like Him, and the world will see who God is through us and our behavior. And that's what He made you for. He made you for glory. He made you to show what the world is missing out on. He, people want to make silly golden calves and call them Jehovah. No. He, they just need to look at the church and what the church is like if they want to see the Father. That's why He put us here. That's what He wants us to do. Another one. Um, so I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. How will people know that you love God? 
because of the love for one another. People will see God because you love. Who is God? God is love. You care about the person next to you. You care about the people in this congregation. This is, I believe this is very much about the people in the church. You don't get offended and sit at home for two years. You, if you're offended, you're not representing who God is. Because God loved his enemies, he forgave them, and he gave his life for them. That's who God is. And your goal, your, your role, the, the person that God made you is to be what? To be an, a representation of the Father. Let's go to the last verse. And Jesus came and told his disciples, I've given you all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I want to finish off with this. Disciples were supposed to look like their master. So much so that they used to rope themselves to their feet. To their feet to the master so that they could learn to walk just like their master. They were supposed to be what? An image of their master. What does God, what does Jesus tell us to do? I've always wondered how they don't all, didn't all fall over. You know, walking, you know, if everyone's, you know, fall over enough, maybe I guess you start to walk <laughs> it must have been pretty funny watching these guys become disciples. <laughs> guys, guys, they're going to they're gonna do that walking thing. Come watch. <laughs> People falling over. So the discipleship is, what, the process of discipleship can be quite ridiculous at times. But the bottom line is, is that our role is to get more people to look like the master. So that more people can see a representation of who God is. You're not God. No one should worship you. No, should, no one should worship me. But if they see me, they should, they should know who the Father is. By who I am and what I do. It's not about your thighs. Or your abs. Or your guns. It's the image of who God is and how you behave. And that's, that's what God made you to do, to show the glory of God to the world through you.